Hello again! This lesson is going to be an interesting one because we'll be covering how to transfer files from one notation program to another. For example, how to move a file from Finale to Sibelius or vice versa. Now, at first you might think that this shouldn't be much of a problem, but each notation program has its own file formats that aren't compatible with each other. For example, a Sibelius document has a .sib at the end, whereas a Finale document has .muse or .musex, and neither program can read the file format of the other. However, there is a file format that can be read by not only Finale and Sibelius, but also other notation programs like MuseScore or Dorico, as well as many, many more. And that is an XML file. Now, XML is an open source language that's been around since the 90s. And if you have any programming experience, you've probably bumped into it several times before. It has many useful applications in all sorts of programming situations and wasn't originally even intended to be used for music notation. In fact, it wasn't until about 10 years after the birth of XML that Music XML was even developed. But we're very lucky to have it around now because it is currently by far the best mediator between different notation programs. So if we want to move a file between software, we export our document as an XML file from one program and then import the XML file into a different program. And with Sibelius, this is relatively easy to do. So with my file open to export as XML, I click on the File tab, then Export. And then under the list of Export options, I select Music XML. And here I can choose to export as a compressed XML file or an uncompressed XML file. And the difference is in the file size. A compressed XML file is significantly smaller, about a 20th the size of an uncompressed file. An uncompressed XML file is also much bigger than a regular Sibelius file and can even get to as big as, I'd say, 30 to 40 megabytes for large orchestral works, which would be quite significant if you had a lot of them. So it's worthwhile keeping in mind that they can be quite big files. But for the moment, I'm just going to select the uncompressed option, press export, save it somewhere, and I'm done. And I could then import that document in a different program if I wanted to. But now we come to importing XML files, and this is where it gets tricky. Because the fact of the matter, unfortunately, is that when files are converted to an XML format, there are certain points of information that become lost. In particular, the scores layout. Allow me to show you what I mean. So I'm going to open a real world example for you. A while back, I was sent this XML file, which was created with Finale. And if I open it up, Sibelius first shows me a window. But for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to ignore everything in this window for the moment and hit OK. Don't worry, we'll look at this window again soon. And when the file finally opens, you'll see that it is an absolute mess. Now, obviously, the score didn't originally look like this. But because all of the layout formatting hasn't been carried over in the XML file, we end up with a layout catastrophe. And this is, of course, very frustrating to an engraver because you spent a large percent of your time just fiddling around with and fine tuning your layout. Now, there are a couple of things that can be done to remedy this. So I'm going to close this score and then open it back up again so that we arrive at that window we saw before. So let's take a closer look at this window. Now, in most cases, for some reason, I think it's actually better to untick the first checkbox and just decide on the page size for yourself and let Sibelius do its thing. And what also seems to help is to unselect the second box as well, which uses the XML's layout and formatting and just select one of your own house styles. Now, instrumentation with XML files can also be a little bit weird depending on which program has exported the files and how the instruments have been named. Time and time again, I've encountered all sorts of odd instrument mix-ups when importing XML files. And so if you already know what instruments are in the ensemble, it might be worthwhile manually putting them in yourself. So if I uncheck Let Sibelius Choose Instruments and use instrument names from the music XML file, when I press OK, I then have to add my instruments to the score myself. And this might seem a little bit time consuming, but it actually works out to be quicker than just checking everything over thoroughly and correcting any mistakes that you find, because most of the time there will be a lot of mistakes.
And now that I'm done, you can see that everything looks significantly better. Obviously, there are still many things that have to be touched up, but it certainly looks like something that can be worked with. We have a lot more potential now. So that's a brief rundown on importing and exporting with XML. And in the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to quickly tidy up a score. For example, a score like this one.